Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com, and uh, basically this video is about a side project that I'm doing, something I'm pretty passionate about is my car audio. Um, I've been into the car audio scene since, oh man, the mid 90s, uh, when I was 13, 14, 15, 16 ish, really heavy into it. Then after um, high school, I got a job as a fabricator because I was just really into fiberglass and just working with different materials to produce different types of enclosures and uh, dealing with different frequencies and that kind of thing. I'm kind of in a little bit of an audiophile, not a crazy freak about it. I've always been far more into sound pressure level or SPL, if you will. Um, I like loud bass. I love that. But I also like crisp and clear uh, vocal, vocals as well. So um, I tend to build systems that are very well rounded, but err on the side of heavier power, more cone surface area for bigger system kind of things. Um, a lot of you guys know that I recently purchased a 1986 Blazer. Let me show it to you. So there's my uh, 1986 Blazer. Um, my plans for this thing is to build it up a little bit as a work vehicle. It is going to get a fancy paint job. Um, I am going to lower it. I am most likely going to swap the 2.8 liter V6 that's in it. It runs great. I don't have any problem with that. So I'll drive it till uh, I need to upgrade the engine. But instead of doing a V8 swap on this, I thought maybe I'd do a... Um, so this is a 60 degree V6. Uh, versus most V6s are 90 degree, and that's the um, angle at which the V is. So instead of a 90 like this, it's a 60 like this. So it's a pretty unique situation. Um, so this 2.8 and the 3.4 from the 92 to 95 Camaro and Fire Firebirds were were the same block essentially. Uh, the 3.4 obviously uh, has you know it's 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 a bigger uh, engine internally, and uh, basically the 3.4 will drop right in here. Uh, what they say, and I'm not 100% on this yet. I'm I'm looking for one, but not real hard yet. I'm gonna find a good one. I'm gonna freshen it up, new seals and everything. And then they say that you put on the throttle body from the 4.3 liter. Uh, and then that's how you get basically 40 more horsepower uh, because this uh, 2.8 is kind of a, well, it's no question about it, it is a slug. All right, so what I'm doing is I am, I want to keep enough space back here available to be able to put work stuff or show stuff or whatever in the back. Um, this back seat is pretty much useless. Um, we've got too many kids than would fit back here anyway. And even, even though I and my wife would fit back in the back uh, semi comfortably, there's no real need to ever have to bring any kids in this. So we're gonna dedicate the two front seats for people and I'm gonna leave the back laid down like this. I'm not gonna take it out. It doesn't make any sense to me and then have to build a new platform to put an audio system on. So we got our factory six by nine locations uh, in the sides there. And while I'd like to do something custom, I don't really think I need to. Uh, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna build my one of my Foxy boxes, the foam and epoxy uh, boxes for this. And one of the reasons that you would build a foam and epoxy or fiberglass box, would be for weight savings. And uh, not only is that important to me because uh, fuel is crazy expensive right now, uh, but I'm going to lower the suspension four inches front and rear. And that, if I put too much weight in there, it's gonna drag the ass of this thing. And I'm not into the uh, Carolina squat, if you will. I like it to be either level or a very slight rake in the back. I want the rear just slightly higher than the front. I believe that that looks the best and suspension travel is important. That's why I'm not slamming it more than that. Anyway, so I'm going to go to about that seam right there. About right here to right there is about 17 inches. So we're gonna go 17 inches back. I'm gonna do a sealed Foxy box with four tens facing up 
uh, so that you can see them and it'll be a showpiece and all of that. I am going to spray it with blood red infinity liner. It's going to be nice. Anyway, so that's the plan for this thing. And with that said, and now that you've seen this, like I said, I'm going to put some Scar Audio TX Series 6x9s in the back here. I've got Scar uh, TX Series 4x6s that are going in the dash, and I've got uh, the uh, TX Series tweeters that'll go up there as well. And I might do some kick panels in the front, depending on how my volume is. Um, I will most likely piggyback them off the back speakers because I don't ever change my, uh, my fader or my balance. I leave it equal all the time. Um, I'm likely going to um, piggyback the four ohm speakers in the back with some kick panels and run the amp at two ohms where I'll get the maximum power out of the amplifier, but also just more sound, uh, louder volume and all of that thing, because uh, I'll be piggybacking the four by sixes and the tweeters uh, to run a two ohm load on the amp already may as well do the rear channel as well. So that's the plan for the interior. Nothing super custom on that. I'm actually gonna use all the factory locations, yada, yada, yada. But I am gonna build a Foxy box for the back, which is a marine quality enclosure uh, that will not only float, but also uh, will never corrode like any kind of metal wood um, or even wood would rot. So uh, that's where we're at with this thing. And that's the view of the interior. Um, as some of you guys know, I've got a pretty gangster audio system in the El Camino. I am going to pull these amps out and it's getting scar audio amps. Uh, these rap, these Savard rap eights, um, are incredibly overpowered with that 3000 Watts. So those are coming out. I got a scar 1500, uh, RP 1500 that's going in here and then a scar, uh, 75 by four that's going to go in here. Those will fit a little better and look a little better on that, uh, amp wall as well. But you can see, I like my scar. I got, these are actually uh, massive five and a quarters. Cause I just had them laying around. I did fiberglass those in those pods into the, uh, the headliner i am going to pull this out again and i'm shooting it with infinity liner this is actually 1k raptor liner i want to use the 2k infinity liner with more texture uh, and i might do it in lime green that actually is the plan uh so anyway i put big systems in my rides generally and i'm working on this foxy box so this is going to be the base um I haven't decided if I'm gonna show you guys all of the ins and outs. Uh, this is gonna save you a third of the power and the way that the bass resonates inside the box, in my opinion, sounds amazing compared to a wood box. So I've got two different types of matting. Um, this is uh, some 1708 marine mat. Uh, and then this is just some three quarter ounce, or no, I'm sorry, one and a half ounce chopped strand. This right here is something I laminated just today. It's still drying. It takes freaking forever for this epoxy to dry. So that's why these boxes take so damn long to make because epoxy takes a while to cure. Um, especially when you use the, uh, the stuff that I'm using. Anyway, uh, this has two layers of 1708 and then one layer of one and a half ounce chopped strand on top. Uh, so it's going to be crazy strong for the top. Again, I'm just going to run four tens. I had that unit in my, these are uh, four, um, what are they? Uh, Sundown Audio E10 V4s. So those are pretty awesome. I just don't want to put all that base in the blazer. That's all. And if, that box actually fits perfect right behind, right where I'm going to put this box. That one fits perfect back there. It's a lot of weight. It's a lot of base that I don't need. I don't, you don't need a ton of subwoofers or a ton of power to enjoy your stereo system. And so what I'm trying to do is get a little bit of thump better sound quality, definitely more volume, but I want to keep the weight down and the space down. I want to take less space. So there are a few brands out there who 
specialize in, in, in smaller enclosures for their boxes. Uh, CT, CT Sounds is one of the brands. I really, really like their stuff. I actually have a couple of their, their eights. I have a couple of their, uh, the Tropo eights. Uh, I've got two of those. Those are actually, we're going to go in the mini, but having a crazy issue with the mini with noise and all of that. So I abandoned that project. Um, Apparently minis are very problematic and I ain't got time for that. So anyway, I got to laminate the other side of this and then cut all the panels. This is actually the footprint of the box. That's how big the box is going to be. Uh, 17 by 38 wide. And then it's going to be 11 inches tall. And I'm going to run the MB Quart. These guys right here. I'm going to run the MB Quart uh, Discus. You can see those, the uh, DS1254s, that's a 10-inch shallow subwoofer. The only reason I'm doing that is because I have four of those. I also have four of the uh, SCAR IX-10 Dual 2s, which I could make four ohms a piece, uh, but that drops us down to one ohm or an eight ohm load, and... I want to use stuff I've got laying around. I don't want to buy a new system for this thing. So the plan is to go ahead and use my tar amps. Uh, this is going to be my four channel amp. And then I've got a brand new base 1200, but that's a two ohm amp. They only sell it in two ohm, not one ohm. So this will give me 1200 Watts at uh, two ohms. And those are, <sighs> They're hit or miss, to be honest with you. The quality isn't the absolute most amazing. Uh, the price is good, and they work. And that's kind of where we're at with that. So, with that said, this Foxy Box is going to be pretty awesome with those four tins in it. Let me just show you a quick box that I have built in the pack. This thing right here, I used, I was just testing a few things out with that thing, but that's a ported box built for two SCAR SDR-8s, and let me tell you something, at 4 ohm is the, I've never, it, it's actually wired to 4 ohm right now because um, I only had an amp that would do 2 ohms, and those are dual 4s, so that would give me a 1 ohm final load or a 4 ohm load, so it was wired to 4 ohms, I was giving it about probably 200 watts of power and this thing absolutely slams and it sounds great um anyway same situation i'm using over here here are some laminated panels i've already got so i'm going to be cutting the box out of those i pre-laminate the panels and then i build them up and then i fiberglass them together basically um Again, this is going to be the baffle. It's thicker than everything else. I will be bracing it with other pieces of uh, foam and epoxy. Um, so, for example, I cut some pieces off of that one to make it the right size. And so I've got this laminated piece here. Um, I can finish the um, epoxy around the sides and then basically make that into at least one of the braces uh, and then I've got another piece that I will probably cut down and make that into one of the braces as well so that's where we're at um, I am using one inch foam this uh, stuff right here on this box but on this box that I already built I used the half inch foam it worked out great there's a sheet of it right here but if we were going to compare it, a little piece right here. Yeah, here we go. So this is uh, this is the Lowe's variant. This is half inch. You can see literally half the amount. This is fine. This is all you need. I already had these from another project, which is why I'm using those. Otherwise, um, I would not have gone out and purchased this. Since COVID, uh, the one inch, it used to be $19.99 at Home Depot for a sheet. Uh, since COVID, it is now $30 a sheet. So um, if you're going to attempt something like this, I highly recommend getting the half inch because the foam isn't going to give you any more structure. It's what the, that's what the, um, the fiberglass does for you. So as far as that goes, <clears throat> um, 
this will have plenty of structure for those little sealed, those little shallow mount tins that are going in it. Uh, I'm not worried at all about that. This thing is built like a brick shit house. It is super strong. And really, all I used on that was um, just chopped strand. I didn't use any of the stronger 1708 or um, I've got six ounce right here of mat uh, that I could use. But really, the chopped strand is, is plenty strong if you layer it up. This is the chopped strand right here. So anyway, so that's kind of like what I'm working on today is uh, working on getting this box built. And then I have, uh, I have blood red, which is what I will be um, infinity liner. That's our 2K bed liner material. Uh, that is what I use for the actual um, finish. Uh, on this one, I had never tried using epoxy before uh, as far as, well, I mean, that's what I'm using there is the epoxy. But this was, uh, Bal I believe this was Baltic Burt's, the fancy stuff. Um, double air baffle on the top. Um, the port is all painted. But I, I used the unicorn spit red dye on this, uh, on the wood on this. And then I epoxied over it. I'm not happy with the finish that it left. However, my other thought was if I wanted to pump it up a little bit, I would sand this thing down and then hit it with Infinity Liner because uh, that's kind of where I'm going. I want people to see when I use that blazer, I want them to see when I pull up. I want to be able to show them uh, when I'm working on their boats and that kind of thing, what kind of work we can do with this foam and epoxy. The other thing is, this stuff is, uh, it's mold proof and uh, I have actually purposely cut a piece out and put a brick on top of it in a bucket of water and left it submerged for literally 30 days, pulled it out, it had no water in it, zero water saturation. So it doesn't take on water and it also will not rot or mold, superior moisture resistance, strong and durable, easy to cut and handle. I mean, it works guys. Um, again, that's the same stuff. XPS foam is what you want. That's the same stuff, just half the size. I think those are $20 now and these are $30. So again, you don't have to use the one inch deals like I am. Um, also, if you use one inch thick instead of the um, half inch, you will end up with just over like 1.2 inches of thickness or more depending on how many layers of fiberglass you put down. So you gotta think about that when you're doing your volume for your boxes because you will get less interior volume with a thicker, um, basically what, whatever you're building your, your box with. So if you're using the half inch, you end up at right around 0 0.70, which is what the, if you look at all the new wood, they have cut some off. This is actually 0 0.70, not 0 0.75. So this is not three quarter inch, it's 0 0.70, which they call three quarter inch, but it is not if you measure it. Just like a two by four is one and a half by uh, three and a half, not two inches by four inches. So wood, I guess, goes by a different uh, standard than the rest of other industries. So anyway, I will bring you back for some updates on this box as I go, uh, but I am trying to build something that I can show off uh, for our marine materials situation. So thanks for watching guys. I appreciate you taking the time. I'll put out more videos like this. I also have an audio channel, which I haven't really used in a lot, but if you guys like audio and custom fabrication, I'm super into that and I do it all the time. Uh, as you know, I have, many cars. I'm a car person for sure, uh, but I also enjoy working on boats and doing fiberglass repairs and building audio systems on boats and doing structural repairs and fiberglass. Uh, I do it all. Uh, so if you need some custom work done, let me know. I'm also a pretty good box builder. I used to compete in sound pressure level competitions. In fact, I was a judge for MECA, the Mobile Electronic Competition Association. I was a judge for them for three years back in the early 2000s. 
uh, when I was still heavily into the circuit up in Virginia. Uh, you know, North Carolina is a big car audio hub and um, in Virginia wasn't far from that. So I used to dominate a couple of different classes. And then when I retired from actually competing, I was then a judge for three years for Mecca. And um, I thought about competing again, but I'd really just rather help you guys out for you to do it if you're interested in my help. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation's group on Facebook where we talk about only my products, my processes, and what I got going on. We're not necessarily gonna talk about this in there, but if you need me, let me know. And if you want the most awesome detailing products on the face of the planet, you can get them at detailjuice.com. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, let me know if you like this content. Let me know if I can diversify this channel and you guys will watch the videos. Let me know. Have a great day, guys. Have a, have a great day, guys. Bye.